This introduction on how to interpret Cirrus HD OCT macular scans. It's important to review the anatomy of the foveal and macular regions and to identify if any of these layers are missing or thickened. When presented with macular scans on the Cirrus HD OCT, there are a few options. You can use the macular cube 200 by 200, the macular cube 512 by 128, or the high definition images five line roster scans. The macular cube 512 by 128 gives you 512 scans in the horizontal direction, 528 scans in the vertical direction. The macular cube 200 by 200 gives you 200 scans in the horizontal, but 200 scans in the vertical. I prefer to use the 512 by 128 because the 512 by 128 scans in the horizontal direction gives you higher definition. If there's a lesion that you're interested in, then I'll go and use the 5 line high definition scans, as you can see on the right hand side. You can actually adjust the different angles for the scan and the spacing, and also the length of 3 millimeters, 6 millimeters, or 9 millimeters. When the spacing is set to 0 millimeters, it usually gives you the highest definition. This is a macular cube 512 by 128. It's important to identify that the patient information is correct, especially date of birth, because the macular thickness is based on a node of data database. Next, in the upper left-hand corner, you have your ILM RP overlay. Any areas of elevation or depression will show up on the scan. If the area is thickened, you can see that it will fall between 400 to 500 microns. It will be orange, or yellow, or red. The thicker the layer, the more warmer the colors. We can see that there's a green line outlined around the box. The outline green area indicates that this scan was tracked. You want to have eye tracking on for every single one of your scans if possible. So you can actually compare the previous scans to the current scan and making sure that you're scanning the same location every single time. At the bottom here we have a horizontal scan going from nasal to temporal. This scan has better resolution than the scan below that which is based on the vertical scan going from inferior to superior. The horizontal scan has better quality or resolution because it's based on 512 horizontal scans versus the 128 vertical scan. That means any lesion that falls outside the foveal area will not show up on your two tomography scans at the bottom. So it's important to move the arrow up and down on the macular cube scan on the instrument when looking for any lesions that fall outside the fovea. On the upper right hand corner we can see that there is multiple circles. There's a one millimeter circle, a three millimeter circle, and a six millimeter circle with nine different sectors and this is based on the EDTRS. The center circle, the one millimeter usually is the thinnest and the three millimeter is usually the thickest. Next, we have your RPE ILM overlay in each individual map layer. If there's any areas of abnormalities, such as in the RPE from Drusen, you will see some small bumps in the area. Now, this is based on the 6mm by 6mm cube scan. At the bottom here, we have your ILM RPE thickness, and this is your central subview thickness. It's important to record this number when interpreting the macular cube scan especially to track for progression or changes. When looking at the macular thickness in OCT scans, it's important to identify which instrument you're looking at. The borders of the retinal scans are always the ILM or the vitro retinal interface and the RPE for most instruments. When looking at the Stratus OCT which is based on time domain technology, the outer borders 
is usually the ISOS junction or the EPIS line and not the RPE. On the Cirrus, the outer and border junctions is the RPE layer. That is why when you compare time domain to special domain, it's always thicker in the special domain. The Cirrus time domain uses six radial line scans to determine the macro thickness, while in the something OCT like the Cirrus, it uses a macro volume cube, which allows better resolution and more accuracy. When comparing different instruments of special domains such as the Cirrus versus the Spectralis, the Spectralis actually goes a little bit deeper in the layers. It goes down to the below the RPE to the Brooks membrane as the border versus the Cirrus which is just the RPE layer. So the Spectralis will be slightly thicker than the Cirrus. An example of why it's important to know what instruments that we're talking about when we talk about macular thickness is the Rise and Ride study, which looked at diabetic macular edema with Lucentis treatment. One of the criteria for retreatment based on macular thickness was that based on the time domain OCT, the stratus, if it was greater or equal to 275 microns, they would retreat the patient with Lucentis. If this was based on the serous, it wouldn't be very thick. But for the stratus, it's actually very thick, about 75 microns thicker than normal. Like any OCT instrument, it's important to identify the nominal database. The Cirrus HDOCT is based on 284 subjects with a range of age of 19 to 84 years old in the refractive area minus 12 to plus 8. So when interpreting your macular thickness scans, looking at the EDTRS circles in the nine different sectors, and also your central subfluid thickness, it's important to understand that your patient may not fall into this known database. I've seen patients with outside normal limits or borderline findings with completely normal foveal contour, intact retinal layers, without any retinal pathology. So it's important not to only look at the colors, but actually evaluate the numbers and the overall scan. In the next YouTube video, examples will be given on different retinal pathologies.